Mario Hernandez from Media Current. In this tutorial, I'll cover how to build a slider using my tool of choice, Slick.js. Slick is a great open source JavaScript library that allows you to build responsive and accessible sliders. As a developer, we try to avoid building sliders, but when we have no choice, uh, we should at least build them in a way that they work for everyone. Slick helps you do just that. Slick provides many effects and behaviors for your sliders, and there's even a Drupal module for it uh, if you prefer to configure your slider using Drupal's UI. My preference is to download the source code and integrate it with my theme manually. I'll show you how to do this in just a moment. In addition, Slick provides a series of settings you can use to achieve many behaviors. Let's take a look at how I build the simple slider component in Parallel. And on the next video, I will show you how you can integrate this slider component with Drupal. Let's get started. Before we dive too deep into building this slider, let's take a look at how Slick actually works uh, so that you can understand once we put in the code together what we are doing. At a very high level, you need uh, a wrapper. In this case, they are using a div, right? And then inside there, you will have individual items. Each item represents a slide. In this case, you'll have a slider with three slides. This class here is the class of your component. In this case, right, we'll be building a component. So this will be the class that we will use on that component. Uh, it's important to understand that the class that you use uh, is gonna be the class that is directly the parent of the slides themselves. Once you have your markup in place, then you would add to your design system or your template, right? Whatever system you are using to build this, the reference to Slick's CSS. These are just base styles that Slick provides. Uh, I think I've seen cases where if you don't include this, you may get some errors because I think Slick may expect some of these uh, styles to be available. Then you will add the Slick JavaScript that comes with the code base uh, from Slick. And in this case, they are using the Minify version. The next thing is you will create your own JavaScript file in which you will initialize Slick.js. And the way this works is you will use that class that wraps your slides here and then do that Slick. And this is a function that will initialize Slick for you. What that means is that once this is initialized, then Slick is available and you can start um, assigning different settings and values uh, depending on how you want your slider to behave. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to show you is that Slick comes with a lot of settings and we'll test a lot of this uh, as we build our slider. Things like accessibility, uh, adaptive height allows you to use the tallest slide in your collection of slides as the base so that all the slides become the same height and you don't see content jumping up and down as you move from one slide to another. Auto play will obviously let you slide it to automatically play without intervention from the user. Lots of things. So let's uh, go ahead and build this ourselves uh, in Paranav. So what I do is I uh, go to the go get it link. Uh, I either get it from GitHub or download it directly to my machine. Here it is, and it's version 1.8.1 uh, as, as the date of this tutorial. There are several ways in which you can integrate this into your theme. What I did is I created a, a slick component, you can call it, or pattern inside my components directory in my theme. And inside here, I copied both the slick JavaScript file and the slick SCSS file. Uh, the reason I did this is because the way my workflow works is everything that is inside components uh, when it comes to CSS and JavaScript automatically gets compiled into my dist folder here. So you can see that uh, there is slick.css and um, JavaScript, slick.javascript. And then what I do is I link both those files in Paranav so that Pattern Lab has access to both those files, right? So I go into Style Guide under Meta. You will see that under the foot is where we will typically add the slick JavaScript file. And then on the head of Pattern Lab is where um, this all that CSS is basically compiles and combines all of my CSS style sheets into one 
This way, every time I create a new style sheet, I don't need to keep adding it to pattern up. So that's what that is. But in your case, if that's not how you have your workflow set up, you can just create a copy of that file or any of the style sheet files that you have there. And in this case, you will create a slick that CSS file and then that code is now available for you in pattern app or whatever uh, design system you are using. So now I have access to this slick JS library in my theme and I can make use of it now. The next step that I do is I then create a component for slider. So I went ahead and created a folder inside my components called slider. And typically I will use three files. One is for uh, demo content. So I have an array of items here uh, with three items. One, two, three. Basically, it will be three slides. Each slide will have an image, a title, and a body, right? Very, very straightforward. And then in Twig, I start with uh, maybe I should make this a section tag right? uh, for the main wrapper of the slider with the class of slider. Then I create a wrapper for the items or the list of the slides, right? And then uh, within that, I do a for loop where I loop through the items array from JSON. And for each item that I find there, then I create uh, a slide. Obviously, if you already have other components built uh, rather than hard coding the markup, you can just integrate or include other components here. This is just for simplicity that I've done it this way. And then I am passing the image variable, the title, and the body. And um, I also wrote some basic styles, nothing fancy, just something that at least makes the slider look a little bit presentable. And finally, you need to write your own JavaScript so that you can initialize Slick and assign any settings that you like to include in your slider, any behaviors, any properties. And we'll go into that in just a moment. So here I have a just a scaffolding of a JavaScript block for a typical Drupal behavior, yours may look different. And one of the first things I do is I need to create a variable for my slider. My variable will be equal to the class I am using for the wrapper of, of the slides. And we'll take a look at that moment. And that is slider items. And I'll add context there for Drupal reasons. If we look at the markup again, we can see that we have the slider as the main slider wrapper, but each of the slides is actually wrapped into this slider here, items. So once I have a variable for my slider, so this variable represents the wrapper of the slides in my code, right? Now I can initialize slick. Save that. I'm going to open my command line and run pattern love so that you can watch for my updates. If I click here, I get pattern love with just my basic stuff that I have for my theme. Then go into the component section and see a slider. And you can see that I have a slider with three slides. If we inspect this, a few things have happened here. One is that there is a lot going on here that may look completely different than what you are used to seeing. Uh, you see a lot of these things that says clone, clone, and I'll explain to you what that means in just a moment. But what Slick has done is it used the, the slider items class that we assign and use that to append other classes to initialize the slider. It has added buttons because we showed uh, we 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 show we told it to show arrows buttons for left and right, and uh, in addition to that, it's got a lot of other things here. Uh, Slick is pretty smart to uh, be able to detect high width and all those things, and be able to properly assign values to our markup based on that. Uh, but this clone part here, uh, what that is is. Uh, I believe it's the infinite setting. So let's take a look. Uh, let me search for that infinite. Yeah, the default is true. What that is, sometimes if you don't have enough slides for a cycle of, uh, for the slider to actually go on a cycle, uh, what a slick will do, it will actually clone the existing slides to create 
a, extra copies of the slides so that you can continue to cycle through the same slides. If we go next or previous or in any direction, you will see that the slider never ends. That's because I'm cycling through all the slides and the clone slides that were created by Slick so that the slider never ends. If I turn infinite off, the page will load for me. Uh, obviously I don't see a difference, but if I click next and I go next again, once I get to the last slide, you notice that I won't be able to continue anymore. Let's add some dots at the bottom um, so that in addition to the next and previous, we can click the dots to cycle through the slides as well. The setting for that is dots and you can say true. The page will reload in just a moment and you see this list of things that didn't exist before. An order list that you can actually style to look like dots and I've done and so my slides. So the idea here is that you can jump directly to a slide. The other thing we can do is uh, autoplay. Let's try autoplay. Once the page loads, you will see that the slider on its own cycles through the different slides. So this will do it for this first part of the tutorial. Uh, on the next part, I'm going to show you how once you have this um, slider built, how you can actually make use of it in a Drupal site. And so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.